is how we are responding to those things that determines whether we are happy or unhappy. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the United States Association for Blind Athletes 2021 Breakfast with Champions presented by Anthem. So. My name is Catherine Rainey Norman and I'm the grants manager here at USABA and I have the honor and privilege of being your MC this morning. We are excited to have you all joining us, whether it be virtually or here from the United States Olympic and Paralympic Museum in Colorado Springs. This year's theme for our breakfast is on and off the court. We've had the opportunity to hear, we will have the opportunity to hear from some of our amazing Team USA athletes about their experiences in Tokyo and how they balance their lives on the field of play and at home. However, before we get started and hear from our athletes, I want to take a moment to invite the chairman of our board of directors of USABA, Mr. Mark Ackerman, to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Catherine. And uh, you know, many of you may not know that Catherine is far more than our grants manager at USABA. She is a four-time Olympian, and I was here the other day when she was welcomed by the staff uh, here at the uh, museum in her first visit. Uh, she was a long uh, track speed skating athlete, but she was also recently named by the governor of Utah as the chair of the Salt Lake City uh, Utah Olympic and Paralympic Committee, which is looking to bring the Winter Games back to Utah in 2030 or 2034. So. Before we get started, though, on our program uh, today, it's a little bit of a sad day for all of us at USABA. Yesterday, uh, we were saddened to learn the passing of one of our athletes, Cody Carmichael, after a long battle with cancer. A resident athlete at the USABA uh, and USA men's goalball program since 2017, Cody competed internationally for USA goalball and was an alternate on the 2020 Tokyo Paralympic goalball team. Cody's presence will be missed by all who knew him, especially his family, his friends, but particularly his teammates and coaches in USA goalball. Our thoughts are with the entire Carmichael family during this difficult time, and I'd ask that you join me in a moment of silence in memory of Cody. Thank you. And Cody, being the fun-loving guy he was, would want us to go on with the show, so let's do that right now. We would like to uh, join Catherine in welcoming everyone here at the museum and all across the United States who are watching us. Uh, and we want to make a special uh, welcome to our friends from the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind and some of the families of the students and some uh, future Olympians and future Olympians. So thank you for being here. We appreciate your, all your support. I'd also like to personally thank our uh, presenting sponsor, Anthem, uh, for their continued uh, support of USABA's programs and welcome more than 50 Anthem associates viewing the Breakfast of Champions uh, with us around the country in our, their offices around the United States. <clears throat> also, a warm welcome to the USABA Board of Directors and committee members who are watching from across the country. Today's Breakfast of Champions is part of USABA's celebration of National Blind Sports Week. Each year, National Blind Sports Week raises awareness of sports opportunities available to Americans who are blind and visually impaired. You may also know that our, uh, the month of October also signifies National Disability Employment Awareness Month, and our theme of today's panels and is on the court and off the court accomplishments of our Tokyo Go Ball Olympians. And you'll be very impressed with many of their off the court accomplishments. I can't wait for you to hear all their stories. You may also know that our men's and women's Go Ball teams live and train at the US Olympic and Paralympic training site in Turnst at Turnstone in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I'm pleased to welcome our friend, the Turnstone Chief Executive, Mike Mushett, to our breakfast this morning. Welcome, Mike.
Without our friends at Turnstone and Mike's leadership, our athletes would not have the facilities that they have, uh, the, the location that they have, that they can all get to from around the country. So we're very grateful, Mike, to you and your team for all you do for USA Goalball. Thank you. For those of you who have uh, never seen or tried Goalball, I encourage you to stop by the interactive Goalball exhibit right upstairs here in the museum. It's narrated by our own Matt Simpson, and Matt and I had the, the unique opportunity the other day with Kat to, for Matt to see the exhibit himself for the first time, even though he stars in it. And there was a family from Chicago there. They walked out of the exhibit and had just seen Matt on the videotape, and then they saw him live, and they were a little uh, taken back. But it was, uh, it was a great moment and, and really fun. I think everybody now who comes to the museum is going to see you live, Matt. So. Um, we, it's a great exhibit, and if you have time after this morning's breakfast, we encourage you to go up and see it. I've tried the sport. It's very difficult. The first time I tried it, I was in a three-piece suit. That's not the way to play goalball, trust me. But um, it's a really a lot of fun. In the interactive uh, uh, exhibit upstairs, you'll learn a lot more about the sport. Well, this is going to be a great morning. You're in for a real treat, and it's been my pleasure on behalf of the Board of Directors to welcome everybody, both here and across the United States, Please allow me to turn this back to Catherine, who will bring us through the morning. Thank you. Mark, on behalf of all of the athletes and the staff at USABA, we just want to say, express our thanks to you and sincerest gratitude for your leadership and uh, support of the organization. We're very grateful. So, our first panel today will be moderated by my friend and USABA colleague, Mr. Kevin Broussard, and he's going to be joined by two-time Paralympian and 2016 silver medalist and goalball simulator here at the museum, <laughs> Matt Simpson. And Matt will be joined with his, by his colleague, Tokyo Olympian, Callahan Young. And while they take the stage, let's take a little look back at the U.S. men's team's exciting overtime victory over Ukraine in the quarterfinals at the Tokyo Games. But so far, both teams strong in defense. That one goes up in the air, and that is in the back of the net for the USA. The danger and goal ball is when that ball gets off the playing surface, ricocheting off the stomach, the abs of Alexander Torpakov. And the power put in by Matt Simpson lifted it into the net. So Callahan Young picks up the ball for the USA, takes it over to the right wing. Oh! And that one is textbook from Callahan Young. He's brought the difference back. It's Ukraine for USA 3. Another slip for Callahan Young. Oh, and another goal. He's laying them in one after the other, like he probably does in practice. I like the, 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 the deliberate slip there as well to put the team off in defensive duties. Then coming in, that right arm over, whipping up ball. Now, angle again, exactly the same. As a previous goal to level the game here at 4 all. And at the end of regulation time, it is USA 4, Ukraine 4. We're into extra time and golden goal. So, slight advantage to the USA. They get the first throw. Can Callahan Young seal this? Yes, he can! And the first throw of extra time from Callahan Young in the center takes the USA through to the semi-finals of Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. It is Ukraine 4, United States 5. The USA bench don't quite know whether they can celebrate yet or not, but now they do. And it is jubilation for the silver medal winners from Rio 2016. Ukraine led for such a large part of this match. But with the first throw of extra time, it's the USA who booked their place in the semi-finals against the People's Republic of China. It took one throw to decide 
the knockout stage of the Paralympic Games. Ukraine showed sporting spirit lining up. They'll be disappointed with how this result has gone, the opportunities they had. But USA have had to fight hard and come back into that. Callahan Young, the man of the moment, the man of the team as it's been this whole tournament, giving them the winning goal. Right around when the postponement happens, we were trying to get our team back together and try to get regrouped. And so going into the games, I had taken on that role and um, I really found my offensive groove <laughs> leading into the games. And so um, our, our coaches, you know, they had a few calls and right before the game ended, Coach Young had called for a 46. And I was like, yes, sir, like, I'll do it. I'll do whatever I can to help the team win. And you know, it worked right before the game ended, and then he said, uh, right before the overtime period started, he said, you know, let's try it again. And I said, okay. <laughs> so it was just a, a crazy sequence because, you know, as a team sport, you do whatever you can to help the team get to the point that they're at. And I really took that to heart. And whatever I could do to get us there, whether it's scoring goals, blocking the ball, handing it off to someone else, um, my number one job was just helping us get to that next round. Well, you did just that. Um, we were watching live here in Colorado Springs at four in the morning, and I was yelling and screaming and waking up my house, but uh, well worth it. It was quite the moment, and great to relive that there. Um, so, Matt, this was your, your second Paralympic Games, and um, you know the first game of the tournament in Tokyo against Brazil, one of our co-captains, Tyler Marin, he went out with an injury and you kind of had to step into more of a leadership role and, and play some more as well. Um, and you stepped up big time. You had nine goals in seven games across the Paralympics. Talk about what that was like for you to, to step up and, and be there for your team and take on that additional role. Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, you talk about a guy like Tyler Marin who is uh, a, you know, a giant of our sport. The guy started playing for Team USA uh, 20 years ago, and he's he's not a he's not an old guy. So he's uh, he's been playing since um, since he could barely pick up a goal ball. But um, he uh, <laughs> losing a guy like that, you know, four four Paralympic games, uh, two time medalist, uh, the, the the kind of the the leader of our team, and uh, you know the guys dived to block the goal ball probably a million times and uh <clears throat> first first game of the tournament he just forgot how to dive apparently and uh hurt his shoulder i don't i don't really understand but anyway so he goes out and um you know the first game of the tournament we beat brazil we knew brazil was the team to beat um we went out there you know callahan tyler and i we went we went out there started the game and and Everything went to plan. We, we had been scheming and planning for, you know, we had a lot of time, uh, as many of us, as all of us did, uh, to sit at home and think over the last two years. And we got to think about goalball a lot. And, and we took good advantage of it. We trained hard, we, we planned, and, uh, and it, just, it just was, it was there. We beat Brazil, uh, but we lost our, kind of the heart and soul of our team. And that was, talk about a blow, that was, that was tough. Um, I think what defined our team uh, we, we didn't come away with with the result at the end of the at the end of the tournament that we wanted um, But you talk about finishing in the top four of the Paralympics and once you get to the top four um, You're talking about the four best teams in the world and and anything can happen. It's it's 48 minutes of goal ball and uh, We just happen to be the team that, that came out on the bottom this time But we've been there before and we know we know how that goes um, But I think the thing that set our team apart was that we didn't we didn't stop. We didn't say, wow, well, Tyler's gone. What's this going to look like? Um, you know, we talk about leadership. You talk about a guy like Callahan, first-time Paralympian, uh, 
you know, team captain unanimously, uh, you know, want, you know, elected team captain, uh, bringing leadership from from a young guy who can sling a goal ball, uh, as we all know. Um, I think the leadership came from all six guys, though. Uh, Tyler did his part, sitting on the bench, uh, and and I had to step up for sure. And that was uh, I was honored and privileged to get to do that. But you know, leadership comes from all six spots, and that's why we were able to keep going and keep grinding because because uh, all six guys kept their eye on the prize and, and and did their part as leaders. Yeah, absolutely. And the the whole scope of the Paralympic tournament is nearly two weeks long, and so when a major injury like that happens during the first game. You really don't have time to, to think about it. Everyone has to step up. And, and Callahan, that's something that you certainly did at your first Paralympic Games here. And, you know, uh, being your first Paralympic Games, we all know this was a very different Games uh, with the pandemic going on. And wanted to get your thoughts on what your experience was like being a first-time Paralympian, also in that leadership role, and then what's motivating you going forward for Paris 2024 and beyond. You know, um, just a comment on the pandemic and the games. It was first time getting to experience everything. And so for a, just a funny anecdote, the walking out into opening ceremonies, it was really hyped up. And, you know, we're all getting ready to go to leave out of the tunnel into this humongous stadium. And you walk into the stadium, it's completely empty. <laughs> it, it, uh, it was quite the experience to get to see that and be part of that. You know, the Paralympics is a giant ceremony, the opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, each game. Um, getting to know your competitors it is the biggest stage that we will ever see and getting to now have experienced that you know I I'm already a driven person and when I don't get what I want it, we, we did not come home with a medal so that just pushes me to want nothing more to push myself and the team around me to be better I want to be that best team in the world and at the Paralympics so Moving towards Paris 2024, I've already shifted all of my mindset towards that. We have world championships next year that we're, we're going to qualify for, and you know I'm gonna go into that with the hopes and desires that we're gonna come home with that gold medal. So it's, it's, it's hard not winning whenever you're so driven because I, all I want is the best for the team and the, the future of goalball. Absolutely, and kind of going back to our theme of the day of, of on and off the court, both of you serve in leadership roles with uh, the USABA Board of Directors. And Matt, uh, along with being on the USABA Board of Directors, you also serve on the USOPC Athlete Advisory Council and Paralympic Advisory Council. Can you talk about your uh, leadership experience off the court and, and some of the uh, projects and roles you've had, especially with the USOPC, with getting equity for Paralympic athletes? Yeah, you know, that is um, one, of the, one of the biggest truly biggest benefits of, of having uh, been, a, been honored to be a Paralympian twice now, um, getting to be a part of, of this organization, USABA, and this broader uh, movement, uh, the USOPC, uh, and really move the needle. And I think something that, as a, as a leader uh, in USABA, that I, I so try to emphasize to our athletes is, this is, this is our movement, this is our sport, this is, uh, we love this game more than more than anybody else, so we sure as heck better be the ones to move it forward. And you know, particularly when you're talking about the disability community, the, you know, the, the the Olympic and Paralympic Paralympic movement is large. Um, there's not a lot of things that um, you know a young goalball player has in common with a you know young Michael Phelps, one might say. Uh, totally different worlds, totally different destinations, but we're all united under this movement. And in the disability community, I think there's oftentimes a lack of emphasis on people with disabilities taking ownership of that. And so for me, for our athletes, um, I think we've, we've come to realize, certainly over the past few years, that that, man, the onus is on us. We are the ones that get to move this ship forward. And we're so, so fortunate to have people like Molly and Kevin and Mark and Mike Mushett and Katie Baker, who I'll throw out there because uh, she, you know, she's, she's the one who, um, you know, makes it rain for us. But anyways, uh, sorry, Katie. Anyways, I, uh, but it's so important that, that the, uh, that the athletes take ownership. And so I've been honored to get to do that. Uh, you know, you talk about issues that, that the athletes need. Uh, this last quad, it was the Operation Gold, and Paralympians said, hey, why aren't we being, 
Why aren't we being rewarded for our sweat and blood and tears at the same rate as the, Paralymp as the Olympic athletes? And um, it was honestly as a matter of the, the leadership of the USOPC and having never really thought about it that way. And they just needed a, the athletes to unite and say, oh, this is a good idea. Why, why are we treating these athletes differently? And, and I think that's so often times when athletes fail to take ownership, fail to, to, to step up into those leadership roles, the chasm between, um, you know, the chasm between staff and leadership and athletes can grow larger and larger because there's not that dialogue. And the dialogue is really, obviously, what drives it. And and there's a desire on both sides to have understanding. So for me, it's been it's been a true honor to get to kind of be a part of moving that needle, uh, both within our organization, uh, professionalizing what we do. Uh, you know, a relatively new. CEO like Molly, who is just, man, has just been such a catalyst. Um, and I've, I was, man, really fortunate to be a part of bringing her here. And, um, you know, and then things like Operation Gold, where you had Olympics and Paralympic athletes uniting behind a cause and saying, this is good. And the USOPC board saying, yes, this is good. And, and that's what athlete leadership really looks like. And that's what happens when we all start pulling together. And I think we're seeing really good results from that. Definitely, and you know, especially in this age of athlete empowerment, the athlete voice is so critical, and just want to thank you for having that role at the highest levels of sport. Um, and Callahan, you yourself are on the, the USABA Board of Directors as well. You also serve on our Audit and Finance Committee. And then all last year, besides training for Tokyo, you're also finishing your graduate degree. Um, talk about your experience on the board, um, your, your leadership roles with USABA, and what your plans are professionally now that you've graduated. Yeah, I, I spent the past two and a half years doing graduate school on top of training, which, um, and traveling for goalball and trying to deal with everything else. It's, it's been a long two and a half years, and now that school's over, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> I, I, without schoolwork occupying my, my thoughts process on a 24 basis, I, I find myself just looking through jobs and trying to figure out what to do. But it's just, you know, through my journey of an athlete, it's given me so many opportunities to now be on the board of directors for USABA and um, help me find my voice in terms of a professional level. and. Through the board, I'm gaining experience. I joined the Audit and Finance Committee, which has given me, I, I always wanted to learn how to, how to um, do accounting and just different actions that are involved with the Audit and Finance. And so it's, you know, the whole process has really given me opportunities to grow as a professional. And moving forward, I'm, I got my master's in healthcare administration. And so I, I really want to get involved with healthcare and find a job somewhere in that realm. And, being so fresh into everything, I'm pretty open to anything. And so the opportunities that come from sport, you know, have driven me to where I am now to finish grad school while I'm training, you know, endless nights of reading textbooks or writing papers in training. And, you know, I think that's why I am driven on the court and off the court is because of sports. They really do model for me what, what it takes to be a leader and to be professional and to be driven and getting what you need in life. And Matt, it's, uh, it's quite the understatement to say you've been pretty busy since Rio 2016. Uh, since that time, you, you finished law school, you got married, you had a child, you are uh, an associate at Sidley in Austin, a law firm in DC. Um, I heard you might just go to med school for fun. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> so talk to us about how you have that, that work-life balance training at the high level that you are and juggling all the things that you do in, uh, in your personal life and work life? I, I, I don't know that I have work-life balance. Uh, I, I, I think I successfully let work and life occupy all of my time co-equally. I don't know if that's balance, though. Um, you know, I, uh, when, I, when we got done with, with Rio and um, you spend you know, four years, and, and for me, 26 years, or maybe not 26, let's call it 16 years, uh, really, really pushing for a goal. You know, when I, when I picked up a goal ball at the age of 10, I said, I want to do this. I want to be a Paralympic athlete. Um, and, um, you know, you, you achieve that goal. You get to go. You get to walk into the opening ceremony stadium. Uh, fortunately, that one did have people in it. And uh, you, get to, you get to play on that stage, and it's, 
it is hard. What's next? Um, for me, you know, I said, okay, well, I love training to be the best every day. I love this competitive, you know, drive. So I'll try law school. Um, and it was good. It was, it, you know, um, I guess nobody wants to, you know, make you cry and steal your lunch money more than your law school companions. So it's very much like the Paralympics. Um, but um, I, you know, as, as far as work-life balance, man, I don't know. I'm very fortunate. I have, have a wife who is, uh, man, just incredible. Um, I think being a first year, second year associate at a, at a law firm is, is hard enough with a baby. Um, and then on top of that, I said, hey, can I, can I try to go to the Paralympics again? And, you know, what was she going to say? So, uh, well, she probably should have said no, as what she should have said. But <laughs> anyway, um, it, you know, it was honestly the craziest, hardest 10 months of my life. And I certainly don't think I'm ever going to catch up on sleep or uh, any, any sort of free time. But um, I think we talk about why we do what we do. Why does USABA do what USABA does? Why do we want people with disabilities to play sports? Um, and it's not because you get to go and, and go to the Paralympics. That's cool. It's not because you get to go win or, or sometimes lose a medal. That's also cool. Um, but we, we want our, our people with disabilities, we want people with disabilities to play sports because we want them to be competitive and everything else that comes. Uh, we live in a society that, that loves to support people with disabilities, but doesn't always know how. It doesn't always know how to, to challenge us. It doesn't always know how to, to say, all right, you're blind, now what? Um, all the things that I get to do, it really did start, it started with sports. It started with picking up that goal ball and saying, man, I can do this. This is, this is my level playing field. This is, this is the one place where it only matters how hard do I work, how skilled am I, how strong am I, how fast am I, and I can control those things. I'm not a blind person on this court. I'm a, I'm a person who wants to win this game. And when you find that mentality somewhere, then it goes everywhere else too. And we find that in sports. We help, we help kids find that in sports, and we hope that it goes elsewhere too. So I totally did not answer Kevin's question, uh, which was about work-life balance. Um, I have no work-life balance. I love to wake up every day and think about what do I have to do that day? I have to work really hard at a job. I have to go work out. I have to turn in my workout reports. I don't do a good job of that. Uh, I have to do these things. And if I take it one day at a time, I can do that. If I think about, man, how am I going to go to Paris in three years and, and be an associate at this law firm still working hard and doing the best I can do, if I think about it that way, it never works. But if I think about it, what am I doing today and how am I being the best today as I am as a, at a first of all, a husband, a father, and then in some order, lawyer and Team USA member, then I can do that. So. Gotcha. Well. Uh, obviously, sports has played a huge role in both of your lives and creating that, that work ethic that you have, the goal setting that you have, both on and off the court, and uh, just really speaks volumes to how those two are interconnected. It's like you said, it's not just about being an athlete, it's about providing opportunities and, and setting your, yourself up for success on and off the court. So, gentlemen, I want to thank you both for your time. We can give a big round of applause for Matt and Callahan. Matt and Callahan, thank you so much for sharing your insights from Tokyo, but um, more importantly, for being so candid about your journeys and what you have experienced off the, off the field of play and how you have become leaders in this movement. And I'm hopeful that some of your remarks have inspired our next generation of athletes to come. Our next panel is going to feature our 2020 Paralympic silver medalist Lisa Chikowski and Mindy Cook and we will be moderated by Molly Quinn USABA CEO so as the ladies take the stage 
look back at some of the highlights from their semifinal shootout victory over Brazil that had everybody on the edge of their seats and banging their thunder sticks. So welcome. Just trying to deceive. Just, just trying to deceive. And she scores for the United States of America. They go 1-0 up in this extra throw. And now, after that deep sigh, she has to take a position in defense. Well, centers aren't traditionally the strongest thrower. And she has to score here. Otherwise, USA are the victors. Hassan Shao to keep Brazil in the quest for gold. And it's saved! Oh. USA are on the way to gold. What a performance by the USA as Aston Sal sends it down the right wing. But Mindy Cook has played one move in this Paralympic game so far for the USA. And she's just taken them through to the gold medal match. Wow. Good morning, everybody. Molly Quinn, CEO of USABA, honored and proud to serve in this position. And Lisa and Mindy, welcome. Wow, it's been quite a journey. And Mindy, we need to start with you. As the lone rookie on the women's team in Tokyo, you found yourself thrust in such a pressure-packed situation that we just witnessed on that highlight, making the final save in a shootout to put Team USA in the gold medal game. What was going through your head in that moment? Yeah, Molly, first of all, thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, I was nervous. <laughs> but also to take you back before that moment, my team had done their job up until that point. Amanda had made two goals in regulation to tie up the game. And then in the extra throws, Ileana made her goal to put us up by one. So my team, they had done their job. They worked really hard. And I, I didn't want to let them down. And so while I was nervous, I felt prepared, though, and I did feel confident. And I think that there was two reasons why I felt that. I think one of the first reasons was in the past year, we had added a new team member to our team, and that was a sports psychologist, Taylor. And one of the things that Taylor really worked on with us was taking in the moment. What was our job in that moment? Not to focus on the outcome. It wasn't, was I going to make this block or was I not going to make this block? How was it going to feel if I didn't or if I did? It was, this was my job. This was my time, and this is why I was here. And so I knew my teammates were behind me. And I also knew that my, my coaches had us prepared for this moment. And one of the last things we did um, in our training camps before we left for Tokyo was practice that exact same scenario. And we had gone through the objectives, and it was, it was hot in the gym, and we were tired. But we, we pulled through in that moment together to complete the objective of that scenario. And so, <laughs> again, I was confident, I was ready. I, we have done this before. And so I walked out on the court, I took a huge breath, I said a big prayer, and my mind went numb. And I just listened for the sound of the ball, and when I heard it, I exploded towards it. And <laughs> I don't remember much else after I blocked the ball. Um, <laughs> the next thing I remember, though, is, is the referee prying the ball out of my hands. <laughs> Um, he said, I'm sorry, you can't keep the ball. <laughs> um, and then the next thing I know is my teammates just engulfed me in celebration. And that is definitely a moment I will truly cherish and will never forget. Well, and Mindy, we certainly want to recognize, Mindy and Lisa, recognize one of your other teammates in the room today, Eliana Mason. Welcome, Eliana. Thank you for being here today. Wow, Lisa, remarkable. Sixth, sixth Paralympic Games, Lisa Joukowsky. With uh, five of the seven games decided by just a goal or two, I can tell you the viewers back home watching the live stream were on the edge of their seats. How do you compare and look at the wild run of seven games in Tokyo compared to the other games that you've been a part of? 
Well, I was on the edge of my seat too, honestly. <laughs> um, every games I've been to have been very unique. Every, every games has a, a story and a journey, and this one is, is no different. Um, I am blessed to be with six women and three staff at the games, at each of those events that put a lot of time and dedication and into being in that moment. And we have, as a program, have developed and, and worked very hard to, to get where we are at each of those games, to be on the podium. And to, to, look, to reflect back on Tokyo and having, in almost every game, we, we had to come back. So that was a testament to all the hard work that everyone had put in on and off the court. And so it's, I'm just so proud of our team. And Tokyo, just uh, looking back, it's, it's a very proud time. And we were, we were nine deep. Great. And Mindy, like Callahan, this was your first taste of the Paralympic Games. What was that experience like, being the only first-time Paralympian on the women's team? Oh, it, it was such a dream come true. I'm still having trouble finding the words to describe how incredible the Paralympics experience was. Goalball is an absolute passion of mine, and to be able to play that sport on the world's biggest stage while representing the United States of America, it just brought me so much pride. And then to earn a silver medal and bring that back to the United States brought me a lot of joy to share that with everybody. But I was fortunate enough to go to that games as a rookie and to share that with such a veteran group of athletes. Those five girls really enhanced my experience emotionally, physically, mentally. They were there, and they always helped me make the most out of my experience. I have to give a big shout out to this girl right beside me. One of my favorite moments was the opening ceremonies. And while we were waiting in line, she took pictures of me, she sent them to my mom, and she always just made sure that I was positioned in the right place and made sure I was having a good time because she knew how special that moment was for me. And before we walked out into the track, she positioned me in a way, she said, if you stand here, you might get on TV. So <laughs> sure enough, I made it on TV. So, <laughs> so I'm very thankful to her. One of our other teammates, Asia Miller, um, Asia and I were roommates, and and each morning, Asia would take my cup of coffee for me. She would go down to the athlete center and she'd fill it up for coffee with me, for me. Um, she really made our eye shade special. She put stickers on them and just was a good veteran preference. Another one of my teammates, Maribai, she also had the same role as I did in the past. And so she was always there for me, um, mentally kind of showing me kind of the ropes and what the experience was going to be, to be like. And, I think the Paralympic experience, there's just so many memorable uh, experiences that we had. One of my favorite things that the, the village offered was laundry service. Um, each day we could have our laundry done for us. And then I think the other thing that I really enjoyed was in the athlete village, there was a hair salon. And I think Ileana and I uh, may have got our hair washed and styled three times while we were there. So <laughs> lots of unforgettable experiences that I will truly remember for a lifetime. Well, and Mindy and Lisa, I just wanted to add that one of the things that we were able to do with the support of the USOPC is welcome their friends and family that couldn't be in Tokyo as fans, and so they were here in Colorado Springs with us for a few days. And Mindy, I had the pleasure of meeting your parents and some of your family members. And Lisa, you um, brought out your strength and conditioning coach from Turnstone, which was really neat to be able to see. And we had a chance to, you know, go to the Team USA uh, booth and watch all the games live, and it was really neat. So I just wanted to let folks know that it was just in fantastic to have that experience. Um, Lisa, as your sixth go around for the games, it certainly was like no other games with the pandemic, and we heard a little bit of that from Callahan. Talk about what the one-year delay, you know, really did for the, for the women's team. Well, when I first heard about the delay, I'm going to tell you what I was doing. I was literally about to step on the treadmill at our Paralympic training site, Turnstone. <laughs> And um, there had been some 
talk in the news feed and um, as mentioned six times it, it, in, fi in other parallel, it's never happened before. So I was like, it, it, they won't postpone them. We'll find a way to do these games. And when it became official, I'm like, I just turned on the treadmill and I was like, I was, I was honestly devastated because we had already worked for almost four years to prepare for that time. And at that time, it was, it was honestly very daunting to be another year to, to do the same preparation, the same rigor um, to do it all in another, it was almost a year and a half actually, you know. Um, and so we were, as a team, we, we talked about the, the delay and our feelings about it and we were all very upset about it because of all the investment we had already put in emotionally, physically. And so it did take us a, a little bit of time and we, I feel as a community, come together very well when we are hit with um, things of that nature. And so we, we leaned on each other as, as a team, as a community, uh, an elite athlete community, and we were able to get ourselves refocused um, within a pretty short period of time, get ourselves refocused, and um, that included us as athletes and our staff, because um, all of our support staff had to then create a new plan, um, a new plan for like our strength and conditioning, because everything is so, um, it's just based on timelines and when are we going to peak, so that was one small piece um, of the plan, but everyone had to refocus and get the goals reset, and Within, within, honestly, a few days, our attitudes went to one more year to get better, one more year to show the world who we are and that we want to be on top of that podium. And so that year was spent with um, utilizing all of our resources, um, our, our, our home at our Paralympic training site, um, Turnstone Center, they provide us with so many resources and their, their, their staff, they are driven and they are dedicated to, to working with us and they're a huge part of getting us um, to where we are today. And so our team was able to, to really just focus in on those on the court goals, um, the strategies of offensive defense. We all had individual goals that we were working on. And then again, the off the court pieces of um, sports psychology, um, nutrition and strength and conditioning were all very large pieces that we were able to um, really fine tune and be be at our best for Tokyo. So it was it was a blessing. Well, and obviously on the court, your 2020 silver Paralympians, Lisa and Mindy, just incredible. As we think about off the court. Um, you both are extremely busy, and you know, Mindy, I had the pleasure of being at the resident house um, on the Turnstone campus over the summer, and I walked into the resident house, and Mindy was at the kitchen table with a huge monitor, headphones on, and she was working. Mindy uh, has a full-time job with the U.S. government, and Mindy, just tell us a little bit about you know, leading up to the training of the games and still working 40 hours a week, how did you manage it all? Yeah, so it's definitely a balance and it's definitely an obstacle to, to training. But I just, first of all, I wanna say that thank you so much to my work, the Defense Logistics Agency, and to my goalball coaches and my teammates because without the support of those guys, I would not be here today. They have supported me so much. But to really answer your question, Molly, I gotta go back to 2018. I had fallen in love with the sport of goalball, but I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and so I thought, I kinda wanna get better at this sport. And so I took some time off of work and I applied for the resident program. And I spent a few weeks in the resident program, the fall of 2018, and I just realized how phenomenal the program was. I got to train with the national team. I got to have immediate feedback from our coaching staff, and then I got to have the expertise of the strength and conditioning team. And I thought, wow, this is so cool, and I really want to get better at this sport. And I knew the only way to do that was to come back to the resident program and come back to Turnstone. And that's really when I started this dream of, I I want to make the Paralympic 2020 team. 
And so I remember, and I walked into my supervisor's office, and I said, okay, I have this big, crazy dream. I want to make the 20 Paralympics Tokyo team, but there's a catch. I have to train, and there's another catch. It's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> and I will never forget, she looked at me coolly and calmly, and she said, okay, how can we make this happen? And from that day is when my work made their commitment to me, my dream, and all of my goal ball requirements. That's also when I started making my commute back and forth from Columbus, Ohio to Fort Wayne, Indiana every couple of weeks. And when I was in Fort Wayne, I would, I would be at the house, I would be able to live there and work there during the day, which I'm so incredibly grateful to have the residence house there so I did not need to find a place to live. And we were five minutes away from the gym. And then when I would go to the gym and practice, my coaching staff was incredible. They would always allow my, me to have my work cell phone there, even if it was loud. They allowed me to have it there just in case my supervisor called and I needed to take a phone call. And again, my teammates were always there, you know, supporting me if I ever had to miss a practice. And my work too. They, they always understood my goal ball requirements and the things I needed to do. So I, I definitely would not have been able to do this balance without the both of them. And, you know, Lisa, off the, off the court, you need to certainly find a delicate balance um, as a Paralympian who's a wife, a mother, and works at uh, Turnstone at the Paralympic training site. You know, what's your secret to making all that work? If anyone has a secret, please let me know. <laughs> Um, I have to uh, kind of reflect on what Matt had mentioned. Uh, I think I'm really still working on that balance. Um, however, uh, I am probably one of the luckiest people because um, I, I work at Turnstone, as we mentioned, that's, and that's an Olympic and Paralympic training site. But my office is within 30 feet of the goalball gym. So I'm never late for practice, which is good. Um, <laughs> but I am uh, I'm very fortunate to, uh, to, uh, to, to have a supportive employer and supportive st staff that I work with um, that are not only understanding of our, of our schedule, and it is ever-changing <laughs> between practices and, and workouts and, and uh, travel, but um, I, I know that they are some of our biggest fans as well. Um, so to have such a supportive work environment is, is definitely very helpful. And then most importantly, I am so thankful for our, our friends and our family. Um, and and that, is, uh, that is very broad. It, it's not only my immediate family that will help, um, will come out and watch our son when we go to the Paralympics. My mom takes on a, new, a, a grandma role, but it's not just for a few days, it's over three weeks. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm more than thankful for my immediate family, but then my goalball family, my goalball friends, my friends, everyone has given um, our, our family endless support. Um, our son is seven years old, um, and cool fun fact, um, Asia Miller, who was on the Tokyo team as well and another six-time Paralympian, um, has a son as well. His name is Ryder, and he is 10. And Jay and Ryder share the same birthday, but they are three years apart. And uh, Coach Ken is out there, and his daughter is Jen, that is also her son as well. So we have um, some very strong connections within our team, but um, our, our children have grown up in the goalball community as well, and so Jay and Ryder have gone up going to goalball tournaments, and um, my teammates, my friends, Ileana, Mindy, everyone has helped, you know, make our families a part of goalball too. So um, the balance is a, a never-ending <laughs> uh, work in progress, and I'm again, I'm very thankful for all all the people that have helped our family to make everything come together and support us on our journeys. And Lisa, this last question is for you. As we close out National Blind Sports Week and National Disability Employment Awareness Month, what are your thoughts on efforts such as those that bring a greater awareness of opportunities for Americans who are blind and visually impaired? I just would like all, you know, all awareness and education about employing folks with disabilities is so important. 
um, employers, I ask you to look at someone's abilities. Don't look at their disability. Um, people with disabilities, they come to the table with many assets and attributes that can benefit your companies. So be open, you know, continue to um, look at all the possibilities. Um, and with regards to National you know, Blind Sports Week, everyone get, get people with visual disabilities involved. Um, any activity is good activity. Find out, there's so many different resources. USABA ha is such a massive resource that stretches across the country and has so much to give to get children, adults involved in recreation opportunities, competitive opportunities. There's a lot out there. And like uh, Matt and Callahan spoke about and Mindy that sports is, can be such a life changer. And, our experiences with sports have changed who we are and set our paths to where they've come today. Yeah. Well, very well said, Lisa. Um, this concludes our discussion with our Paralympians, Lisa, Mindy. I'd like to ask Lisa, Mindy, Eliana, Matt, and Callahan to all stand so that we can celebrate and thank you for your accomplishments. USA, 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 USA. Great. Thank you. How about another round of applause? Okay, you guys are going to stay. So as we finish out our program, one of the things that we love to do every year is to be able to recognize our USABA Hall of Fame. And our most recent induction to that Hall of Fame team category was the 2008 USA Women's Goalball Team that captured gold, the gold medal at the Beijing Paralympic Games, the second gold medal in the women's team history. At this time, we'd like to formally induct that 2008 Women's Goalball Team. Those team members include Jen Arm Brewster, Jackie Barnes, Jesse Lorenz, Robin Thuryong, Asia Miller, and Lisa Joukowsky, and the team was coached by Ken Armbruster. Armbruster. I'd like to ask uh, Ken to come up here now and Lisa to uh, stay on the stage so that we can uh, formally uh, in introduce them into the Hall of Fame. USABA 45 for 45, episode 35, the 2008 Women's Paralympic Goalball Team. The, two the 2008 U.S. Women's Goalball Team exemplified grit and determination in capturing the gold medal at the 2008 Beijing Paralympic Games. Playing host nation China in the final before an estimated 5,000 of their fans, the U.S. team prevailed with a hard-fought 6-5 victory. Team captain Jen Armbruster was also selected as flag bearer to lead the entire USA delegation at the opening ceremony. Coached by Ken Armbruster, other team members included Asia Miller, Jesse Lorenz, Robin Thuryong Tuting, Lisa Banta Tchaikovsky, and Jackie Barnes. The team was elected to the USABA Hall of Fame in 2020. To donate and support USABA, visit usaba.org. Well, fantastic. Coach Ken and uh, Linda, thank you for being here today. We're going to ask our athletes to uh, step down off the stage as we uh, go into our closing remarks for our 12th annual Breakfast with Champions. You know, what a fantastic way to celebrate USABA's 45th anniversary, National Disability Employment Awareness Month, and National Blind Sports Week. It's been, it's been a big month for the organization. And, you know, today's event would not be po made possible with this, without the support from the following sponsors. Anthem, Central Bank and Trust, Delta Gamma, Executive Park Eye Care, El Pramar Foundation, Colorado Springs Downtown Lions Club, the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee, USI, and also I want to thank our friends who traveled in from across the country, from Vanda Pharmaceuticals, for being here today.
Today, we heard from our USA goalball athletes who represented Team USA on the world's biggest stage just a few short months ago. We also heard about how outside of goalball, they're pursuing careers in the workforce in a wide variety of field and how much they correlated sport with how they live their lives professionally and how successful they are. It's exciting to celebrate these athletes' achievements at the recent Tokyo Paralympic Games, but it's an also an exciting to share with you what the future for USAVA holds. In the last four or five months, we've launched Blind Soccer with the short-term goal of developing this recreational sport across the country for, through schools for the blind, universities, parks and recreation departments. Our long-term goal is to field the first USA national team in LA 28. In order to continue what we do today and to, de and to develop the second Paralympic sport, we need your help. Help us spread the word through your networks, whether you're here in person or watching around the country. You can all be champions of USABA's mission so we can raise the necessary funds to provide opportunities for blind and visually impaired youth, athletes, and adults across the country. It's easy to do for you folks here in person. There are some envelopes for you to take home today. And across the country, you can always visit our website, usaba.org. In closing, as we celebrate our 45th year of providing life-changing opportunities through sport to Americans who are blind and visually impaired, we eagerly look forward to the next 45 years and expanding opportunities and creating awareness of the power of sport and the benefits of living an active lifestyle with those who have a visual impairment. Again, thank you for being here. It's just been an honor to host our Paralympians and all of you as our guests. And we want to thank you for your continued support. Have a nice rest of the week.